It's episode three of the golf. And you lucky buggers get to spend time with me in this boot while we put the amps in. Let's go. Right, so we've got half a ton of cable here. These are just temporarily wired up so that I can get some rear speakers just while I'm driving it around. They'll be disconnected in a second and we'll install the amplifier. But for now, I'm gonna move these to one side because what I wanna do is I want to flatten off the cables that are sitting down here, which I'll show you now. I'm just gonna put a carpet over them. I'm gonna loose lay everything in the boot and then we're gonna line up where we want our cables to go. Times like this, you need to spend a little bit of time looking like you're not really doing that much, but you're eyeballing everything, you're weighing up where it's gonna go, you're gonna send your left, left, and your right, right, figure out where your distribution's gonna go, how easy the access is to your fusing, things like that. So um, yeah, let's work it out and we'll work it out together. So three amps, and what I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna have to face one backwards. When these very first came out, I remember seeing them and seeing their plugs and their data cable style sort of port plugs, which you'll see as we move along. And I remember thinking, oh God, why have you done that? Uh, I kind of still think like that, but I understand it's a solid connection and you know, it's manageable, we can work with it, okay? So I, ha I am having to face this backwards because in order for me to get it close enough to these guys and face forwards, the plugs will just, they'll just foul the amplifier and I want it to be quite even. So backwards it is, which should save me some questions in the later episodes when people say, oh, what happens backwards? These badges, can be moved around so they will all face the right way and the triangular design for the boot floor should cut off the uh, model name for the amplifier which is the only real telltale that it's going to be backwards so yeah go for that now majority of these cables are just going to land straight in the front of this uh, VX606R here so they can be relatively short so things like these lengths will be removed because they're pretty much straight there see this this baton here you can just see it they pass under this hole here and straight into the amplifier so so yeah I can actually cut these right down I won't do it right now because as with anything, we, we mark it all up and we know what everything is around the car then. But this comes straight over, this comes straight over. So all of these cables basically run straight forward and then we've only got power and then we've got a speaker cable here which has to run around the amplifiers that are in you know various positions. So these may need splitting down a fair bit, but we'll get there. I think I've figured it out what the VXI hub is for. It's for comms between the DSPs on the amps, so you've got one point. So if you think about it, if each amplifier has a DSP and they don't know that they're connected together, you have to tune each DSP individually. What the hub does is it takes a signal from the master amplifier, puts it into the hub, and then you connect all of the other amplifiers to the hub and then you can control the DSP through that. What it also does is take a um, SP diff or Toslink optical digital input and distributes that between the amplifiers as well. So in this car, for my DAP in the center console, which is fiber optic out, I'll be able to go straight into this and then out to all the amplifiers and the same DSP will apply to that. 
what I was thinking was that I could go high level in to the VXI amplifier because it's going in there and being DSP, so it's being converted from analog to digital, that it would give me a fiber optic output that I'd plug into this and then send fiber to the rest of the amplifiers. It doesn't seem that that's what I'm gonna be doing. So what I've got to do is go high level into the first one, use the pre-out from the master amplifier to the analog input on the slave amplifier, so the 404. Uh, and then use the pre-out from this amplifier to the mono amp, which is a daisy chain configuration. So no issues really, just different to how I expected it to be. Let's get to it. I mean, I've got my distribution, big old massive connections distro. I've had this in, in about 50 cars. That'll be going there for power and earth distribution. I said we were gonna uh, independently ground these, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them to this distro and then pull them out of that distro to the car somewhere. Yeah, and now I've got to trim down some of the cables and uh, and get amongst it. But I think I've found my layout, which will be a VXI hub along here. And I'll disconnect this. Um, oh, this is the, the BTC. I'm pretty sure it's called a BTC, the Bluetooth controller. So um, any sort of laptop or uh, iOS app or Android app, you can go straight into the Tune software and set up your system that way. If you want, you can either save it to the cloud or you can save it to the device. I'd save it to the device, um, but that's just me and my tin hat. Jump start. So, as you've just seen, it's just fired up. I fired up within seconds of jump starting it. Now, jump starting it is something we have to do with a lot of DSP amplifiers. There's, a, there's various ways of turning on DSP amplifiers or high level inputs or auto signal sensing where it senses voltage on its input, therefore wakes itself up, tricks the, re, it trips the relay and turns the amp on. There's DC offset, so when it notices a substantial difference in voltage on the power cable, like when you start the car, uh, things like that. And then when it stabilizes after you've turned the car off, it then turns itself off. And your standard remote trigger in. So the one we're all used to, the sort of 12 volt feed from an aftermarket head unit. Now, of course, in this car, we haven't got a remote feed because we're running OEM integration. We don't want to run an ignition feed to the amplifier to turn it on because that can sometimes turn amps on and off pretty hard. Uh, so we want signal sensing. To do that, we need to have access to the DSP suite connected to the amp so that we can turn on or tell the amplifier that we want it to be turned on via signal sensing. So we had to do that and that explains my, my sort of jump start that we had to do earlier. Now it turns on on the button each time you do something like open a door, for instance. This should, there you go. I thought it was going to mug me off for a minute here. This should, you know, in a moment turn off uh, because it will go back to sleep after it notices that the car isn't being used. Yeah, so a couple of points from me. I mean, that's what these episodes are about. They're about the JL product and us and what we think of them. The VXI amplifiers feel like they're made of marble. All right, they're rock solid in your hand, which I know isn't, 
you know, the be all and end all of sound products, but typically the stronger they are and the better built they are, the more robust they'll be. And sonically that has advantages as well, from vibration to noise transfer, everything like that. Um, so yeah, they just, they, they feel amazing. Um, the rack is complex, okay? This, what you're seeing here, is the loose lay that I had to do last night to get control of all of the amplifiers in the um, tune software from the VXI hub. You'll notice this light's flashing. That means that we've only got control of that at the moment because I only plugged it in for 10 minutes. I wanted to make sure we had our ins and outs correct. Um, I haven't worked out quite yet how to switch all three of these onto the same network, but that'll come in the next 10 minutes. So that's why it looks like this. I've had to order shorter Cat 5s. I just didn't, just something I didn't consider when we started. Um, usually we've got Cat 5 around, but all our Cat 5s are five meters, five meters long. That's, it just leads to a more complex rack. So things like you can see the amount of plugs and cables and wires and different things that we've had to do that our products that we use in-house currently, which are fantastic products, we don't have to do any of these things we can just go straight into the amp board and things can look a fair bit neater. Now, you know, there's a counter to that. There's a reason why these plugs are all outboard. If these plugs aren't outboard, they're inboard, which removes space inside the amplifier, which is valuable real estate. So, you know, whilst they claim that these are tiny amps, you're gonna have to factor in that you need at least three inches from the front of it if you're using decent power cable to get it installed in a tight space. So be that positive or negative, it means we've got more real estate inside the amp for amp rather than for cable inputs. It also makes connections a lot more substantial. We're not solid soldered onto the PCB and then crimping down, you know, so that, that is a bonus. I can put an amp rack together like this in around four hours using, say, a five channel, a four channel, an external DSP with RCA, things like that. This has taken me about eight hours. Now, of course, there's a little bit of learning involved in all of the plugs, the ins and outs. It took me a little while to figure out that I needed to send pre-out to the pre-ins on the other amplifiers and they couldn't network together with Cat5. You know, so th there was a little bit of reading going on. So yeah, it was a, a more tricky rack to sort of put together, but I think that can be put to it being brand new to me rather than um, rather than it just genuinely being a difficult thing to do. There's various other reasons for these plugs as well that you know you can you can sort of read up on or listen to on, on JL's YouTube channel, which is fantastic by the way. The support on their YouTube channel and just all of the 101s, like the the the, the series of question and answers and stuff, they do a brilliant watch if you're considering this sort of product. It's worth taking a look at that. But the, you know, these plugs are effectively noise-free plugs, so everything's separated and isolated in the way that they wanted them to be and things like that. So, you know, there is some stock in why they're like that. Of course, I still I would like an amplifier. I had no wires, you know, we all would, but they have to, and there's certain proprietary ways with these amplifiers that we need to do. Build-wise, you know, these cables, they're all rock solid, they're all braided really well, they're quite hard. Um, you know, I cut off the RCAs to the 606 and I soldered hardwire the, the high level inputs because I didn't want to solder RCA connections onto the speaker cables and create more solder joints. I thought I would remove eight and add two rather than, you know, well, adding eight basically or having eight. So, I, you know, I decided to do that. On a client car, we probably wouldn't do that because it means that this loom then you would have to solder plugs back onto it, which might affect the resale of the amplifier if you care about that sort of thing. The Tune product yesterday, once I jump-started the amplifier, we were in and it was super intuitive, really easy to use. Everything was quite obvious in the program as well. It looks much more like a sound engineer program than it does uh, a prettied up sort of frills program you know it's it's very sort of no frills and uh yeah quite an obvious thing to see you can tell you're going to be able to dial these things in so I, I mean i'll report more on that in the next one but this is this video will be specifically about the rack going together i am going to tidy it up before we finish this video 
but it is going to have over 15 meters of cat five simply because I don't have any others and then tomorrow I'll swap them. But I'm going to stick some tweeters on my dash because as you know, as you all know, following this series, there's no front speakers, no front doors done yet. You know, this is kind of been done the other way around that we would usually do it. But I need to get this done so I'm out of Stuart's way so he can carry on fabricating the floor. And he can also then line the amplifiers up. So at the moment, these have to stay uh, a little bit loose. And we've been putting um, microfiber towels down to stop them moving around while it gets driven gently. Um, but these are, the, these are the things you do, you know? So... Yeah, I'll neaten these up. I'm going to stick some tweeters on a dash. I'm going to change the purpose of the pre-out because it's still on subwoofer. So my front doors at the moment are trying to play 40 hertz down. And uh, they, they're doing it, to be fair. They're OEM speakers and, yeah, the doors aren't really buzzing that much. So, yeah, I'll work all of those things out and uh, we'll get back to it. There'll be a lot of time lapse and there's been a lot of time lapse in this video and there's about to be some more. Let's go. Let's go. C7 tweeters just temporarily either on the pillar or um, just on the dash there's like a, a series of cups and mounts and all sorts of bits and bobs like this that I can just stick them on with the tweeter itself is quite unremarkable to look at I've heard these before so I know it is a decent tweeter but it doesn't really look much to, to the eye um, let's have a go with that. We've got a protecting cap in here as well. Sweet. Let's go. Right, we're here. We're going to solder this cap in place on this cable. It should be a little bit further away in my opinion, but we're in the experimental phase. So if you're sitting there watching this thinking, Oh, he's soldering a cap in. He shouldn't be doing it. Just wind your neck in, don't worry about it. Tell me about it when it's finished. We've got to work these things out. We've got to get these things fitted, figure out how they sound. I don't want to put all that effort into maximising everything we do to find out that at the end it sounds like poo. It's not what we're at. Who's nicked my soldering iron? gonna do pull this through its mount we, we won't be using these when it comes to actually doing the build but um, for now because I'm sound deadening them into place I'll put them in there like that and then I'm gonna connect them to this with the cap in line like so, so that's out of the way. Mid-range feed, which of course isn't connected at the minute because I can't just stick the mid-range to the dash like I can the tweeter. It can stay where it is. And the OEM plug, there's no point in me tying all this up for now. Like I say, this is just a temporary thing so I can get the channels assigned um, and I can just figure out that we're playing all the right noise from all the right places. And it would make my drive home a little bit more enjoyable. Plonk this here like this. Other one's already done. And it's actually going to fall into there, so I'm just going to have to use a big old blob of sound deadening. But yeah, get this, get this uh, pillar back on now and then. Oh, here she goes, look. Making Mark 7 pillars look, it's like a piece of cake. Battery just ran out again on the camera. This is why I don't shoot many episodes because 
like to get all these little details in which I, I really don't mind showing people it's not it doesn't bother me at all but it consumes time it consumes power from the cameras batteries are constantly dying you need to make sure you've got your mics turned on which I haven't and that should get a little bit better for you um you know so a quick sort of 10 15 minute walk around to show you what we've done to me is a much more efficient way of doing it but I do realise it's a much more pleasant experience when you get to see the sort of uh, nuts and bolts of it, if it were, like this. I mean, this is this is hardly high quality installation. This is just me trying my best to get these things in, so I can prove a bunch of things to myself before committing to the the full thing. Because this is, you know, this is a twin pillar three tweeter or do we put the tweeter down here you know however it ends up happening the stakes are high you know the stakes are high not as high as my front stage with the sound deadening glued in tweeter So that's them in, I'm going to go back to the boot, I'm going to plug the laptop in, I'm going to figure out, uh, I don't need to figure out what channels are where, we've already done it, I just want to make sure I can prove them, because of course, up until this point, we've only had bare end speaker cables and rear speakers running, so let's go and do that. around to our hearts for 10 now let's hope we can stop that amp from flashing white i'm sure it's just a setting but everything's working all the networking's correct all the clarity's correct everything's good so now we can start having fun and get on with pre-bits all right take it easy